Hi kiddos. I hope everyone's doing great today. Staying home, being nice and healthy. Uh, I'm trying to do the same thing as well. And I hope to see you guys very, very, very soon. Today I'm gonna to be reading a few of our favorite stories at school. These books are st stories that we've read before as well and I hope you guys like them and enjoy them again. My first book is called Feet Are Not For Kicking by Elizabeth Verdick. This is an, again, another book that we use in toddler class to help communicate that hitting hurts and that feet are for a lot more things than just for biting. Let's figure out what they're for. Let's see. Look at those feet. Aren't they sweet? 10 little toes all in a row. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten toes. What are feet for? Walking, standing, leaping and laughing, they're having fun, running and jumping, climbing and pumping, but they're swinging on the swings. Feet are not for kicking people. Ouch, kicking hurts. Look, even the dog saying, ow. Look, the little boy's crying. Maybe he got kicked. Ouch. If you want to kick, what can you kick? A big ball, a little ball, or leaves in the fall. If someone kicks you, what can you do? Say, feet are not for kicking people. Ouch, kicking hurts. Oh no, it looks like he's about to, get, to kick her. And she's saying, no, thank you. Feet are not for kicking. Look at those feet, aren't they sweet? Wiggle them around. 10 little toes, all in a row. And little toes. Feet are not for kicking someone. Feet are for fun. Look, well, even little puppies having a fun time with them too. Look at the little baby's legs too. And the cowboy boots and shoes. They're just having fun dancing. The end. My next book is called Frosted Glass by Denny's Cazette. This book is a really nice book and it's all about a little boy who has a big imagination. Let's see. Gregory touched the window. The glass was cold and frosty. He drew the sun. There's Gregory at school. He's drawing the sun. Gregory said the teacher, please come to the front of the room and draw a circle for the class. Gregory drew a circle. It looks like a flat tire, said Donald laughing. Oh no. There's his class and there's him drawing the circle. Gregory sat down. An ant walked across his arithmetic paper. Gregory draw, drew a city for the ant to live in. When it was finished, there wasn't any room for the answers to his arithmetic problems. Oh no, he ran out of space. At recess, Gregory watched some big machines working across the street. They looked like iron dinosaurs fighting in the dust. Look, the machines turn into dinosaurs. Gregory, shouted the principal. Recess is over. 
Get back to your class. Gregory ran. He forgot recess was over. He had to go back to class. We're waiting, said the teacher. Gregory took out his crayons. He set them neatly at the top of his desk. He put his best eraser next to his favorite pencil. Adrian gave Gregory a piece of drawing paper. Gregory brushed it off. There's the teacher waiting for him. And here's Adrian giving him some paper. <gasps> and his crayons fell on the floor. Come on, come on, moaned Curtis. We don't have it. We don't have all. Today, said the teacher, we're going to draw a vase and flowers. We call this still life. Please begin. There's a mess he made. And there's a teacher telling them to make the vase and flowers. Gregory drew his pencil carefully. He turned the picture upside down and added shadows. Upside down, the flowers looked like flames, and the vase looked like a rocket ship. Gregory added fins. He drew spinning planets and flashing comets in the night sky. He filled the darkness with his tiny stars. When it was finished, he signed his name. So he turned the vase into a rocket ship. Let's see what it looks like. Whoa. How cool is that? Look at his rocket ship and the planets and the stars. What a great imagination. The bell rang. Now you're going to get it, whispered da Donald. You were supposed to be drawing flowers, not a rocket ship. Time to go, said the teacher. Adrian, please collect the pictures. Adrian stopped at Donald's desk. Gosh, she said, I didn't know your, little, your baby brother could draw this good. Very funny, Donald grunted. Gregory put his crayons away. Time to go. Don't forget your homework, said the teacher. Gregory opened his desk and, fo and, fo and found his homework. He folded it and put it in his lunchbox. Gregory walked down the hall and heard the teacher call his name. Gregory, she said, your lunchbox. Gregory walked back to his desk and got his lunchbox. He forgot his lunchbox. He climbed onto the bus and sat next to the window. Just as the bus started, it stopped. Whoa, shouted Adrian. She jumped on the bus and flopped down next to Gregory. That was so close. I had to help the teacher put the pictures. She sighed. You should see them. Most of them look pretty good. Mine's so-so, but yours. Look, Adrian barely made it onto the bus. Let's see what she's gonna say about his picture. You should see it. The teacher put it right in the middle of all the flowers. It's beautiful. The teacher said so. I love it. How do you make those stars? Do you want to, a bite of my crunch bar? Gregory smiled and bit a piece off the candy bar. He touched the window. The glass was cold and frosty. Gregory drew a circle. There's Adrian telling him how great his picture was. Let's see. It was perfect. A perfect circle. So Gregory has become a great artist using his big imagination. I hope everyone enjoyed my stories today. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all tomorrow.